Hey everybody and welcome to Arminet. Uh, I'm your host Dagger. For this session we're going to be walking through the Eden Editor, talking a little bit how to use it and um, how to start building your first mission if you've never used the Eden Editor before. Um, now first things first, this is going to be very base level stuff. So if you're an experienced Eden Editor user or if you've played around with it even a little bit, you may not find much uh, use uh, or, or much useful information in this first or second episode. Um, however, for those who have never opened it, have always wanted to know how to use it, you may really find a lot of useful information here or at least a place to start. Now first things first, there are tons of Eden Editor tutorials on YouTube uh, and other places. There's a lot of support on the Bohemia forums for the Eden Editor. In addition to that, there's a little kind of uh, widget help system in the Eden Editor itself. Okay, So we'll go ahead and dive in and uh, we'll talk about uh, kind of the first things you need to consider uh, when building a mission and um, what type of mission you want to build and a little bit of Eden Editor familiarization. Okay, So let's go ahead and get started. Um, right now we're going to go ahead and go to the Eden Editor. You can access it here in this panel. Um, called editor or you can go up to single player editor um, we're all going to be running we're going to be running everything vanilla uh, from uh, for the first few classes okay um, once we get through some of the baseline stuff we'll start introducing some mods to that especially some mods that are um, what I would call uh, your standards you know like ace 3 um, and, and a few others so we'll get to that um, but for now, we're just going to focus on a vanilla build. If your unit that you're a part of, um, you know, already has a, a mod set and they're building missions with that mod set, you can still build a mission using this vanilla uh, setup and vanilla template. And once you've got something built, or at least even a, a, a pretty basic sketch of your mission, people within your unit can probably help you introduce your mod set into that build and start linking some of that stuff up. But to keep things simple and to keep things straightforward, we're going to start with just a vanilla feature set here. Okay. So the first thing you can do is choose a map. Obviously from the vanilla aspect of the game, if you own the Apex expansion, you're going to have a few options here. You can have Altus, Malden, uh, which was a free download uh, for Bohemia, which is one of my favorite maps actually. Um, Stratus, Tanoa, and the uh, VR environment. Um, some people may ask, what do you use the VR environment for? I personally use it for template setup. So um, maybe if I build a fob that I want to use later in multiple different missions I build, I can kind of build the fob here in virtual reality and save it as a custom preset. And more on that later. Um, first off, though, you have to start asking yourself a few questions. What type of mission do you want to build? Now, for the sake of this tutorial, we're going to build kind of a standard, small military operation type mission. Okay, um, but there's still some questions you have to ask yourself. Some of the type of questions you may ask yourself are: uh, How many players are going to be playing this? Uh, is it a, um, a cooperative mission or is it a versus mission? Is it a single player mission? Um, what is the enemy type? What is the objective? What is the environment? Um, so again, a lot of questions to ask yourself. So for the sake of this tutorial, we're going to start with um, uh, a map that everyone who owns Arma should have. Okay, we're going to start with Stratus. Okay, so we're going to load Stratus up. Um, when you come in the Eden Editor, you're going to be in this uh, 3D view, which is kind of the big feature of the Eden Editor. You can move around. You can explore the island pretty quickly, and you do that with your WASD keys and you clicking your right uh, mouse button and holding it to turn. Um, you can lower and raise an uh, ele elevation with the um, with the Q and Z keys respectively. So Q will raise your elevation, and Z will lower your elevation. Okay. So uh, you can also hit your M key for map, which will take you to your map screen. Okay, so you can see where you're at and you'll see where your camera's at, which is very important. Um, if you want to hop to another location, you can very easily click on the map, right click on it, and set, go here. It'll place your camera over there, so right away you're kind of where you want it to be. Um, let's look at the Eden Editor uh, interface for a minute here and kind of get a little bit of uh, the lay of the land. And we're not going to go into every um, uh, feature and button. 
uh, but we're going to kind of go over a few basics, okay? The first thing right up here at the top is you're going to have your new open and save features, okay? Obviously, all those are very important. You can create a new mission. You can open a mission that you've already been working on previously or save a mission. If you go into scenario up here, there's a few more uh, options for that, such as save as if you want to do an alternate file save, uh, name. I do that for when I'm iteratively building a mission. So, for example, if, I, if my mission is named um, Stratus Mission 01, um, and I make some changes on it. A good rule of thumb is if you're about to make a major change in your build, but you don't want to screw up anything you previously did, say load up your, your Stratus Mission 1, but then immediately save it as Stratus Mission 2. That way you have an iterative save. Okay, um, That will prevent you from destructively screwing something up, and you can always kind of go back to that original state of uh, Stratus Mission 1 and pick it back up from there if you, for some reason, mess something up. Um, from here, you can also do things such as publish to Steam Workshop, export the mission as a single player uh, PBO file or a multiplayer mission, etc. Um, you can also merge and a few other things. Again, we're not going to go over everything. So the first thing we're going to do um, that I tend to do when, I, when I'm starting a mission, before I lay anything down, I will go to um, save. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and give it a name. Um, and the file, the file list here you see is um, missions I've already kind of built um, for something else. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and name the mission. Now we can name it whatever you want, but for this tutorial series, I'm going to call it Arma uh, Arma Net Tutorial, and then we'll call it zero one. Okay. Now you'll notice I put little underscores. Um, if you put a space there and not an underscore, you'll get a percentage sign in the file name. It's not a terrible thing. It just makes it a little harder to read and a little messier. I like to put the underscores. Okay. You also see the option here to binarize the scenario file. Now binarizing it will um, uh, make the the mission um, SQM file unreadable and un or sorry uneditable in uh, text-based editing programs, which we'll get to in a minute. Uh, or a little bit later. So for now, I will leave it unchecked. However, once your mission is totally done and final, if you want the ability to kind of optimize it and get it to run a little smoother and stuff, um, and, and like cut down the loading time, you can binarize it. Um, okay, so we're going to go ahead and hit save. All right, and now up here in the top right, you'll see it says Arminet Tutorial 01 Stratus. All right, so first thing is first um, what type of mission do we want to create we know we want some sort of a military raid or you know assault mission here um, I'm thinking two or three blue four players can attack um, an AI controlled um, op four military installation okay so to do that we need to scout some locations and this is kind of the fun part of mission building by the way when you're when you're flying around the map here with your WSAD keys you can hold down the shift button to go a little faster okay which does help you can even then scroll with your mouse button while you're holding shift and go even faster so like that it allows you to transverse the land really quickly okay so the first thing we need to do is find some locations. So let's do some scouting. Now we know on Stratus we get a couple locations we can look at. We got Gurna, we got Camp Tempest, Camp Maxwell Air Station, Mike 26, <clears throat> the old outpost down here. Uh, we have kind of a, a radio communications complex here, uh, Camp Rogaine, and Camino Firing Range. So a lot of options, the Stratus Air Base, obviously, <coughs> excuse me, Agia Marina. But the for the sake of this mission, we want to keep it kind of small and contained. So we are going to choose, we're going to scout some of these locations and see what uh, would be a, a cool mission start point or mission objective area. So uh, one cool thing about Camp Maxwell is it's surrounded by, by a lot of woods uh, tree cover and stuff so it allows you to, to proceed up under some cover and you can kind of put your camera down here and get a sense of what it will be like as you approach okay so you can kind of see that this could make for some interesting gameplay versus uh, if we fly over here to air station mic 26 it's a lot more open and any attack you you make on air station mic 26 is uh, you know stealth 
is probably to be it's probably going to have a little bit less of an impact because you're going to be kind of exposed approaching. Now there's a blind side over here um, that I always like to approach from when I'm assaulting uh, this station, but um, generally um, that's an issue you have to deal with in here. Um, so for the sake of this operation, I'm thinking I'm thinking we go back over to Camp Maxwell. Now, let's look at Camp Maxwell a little bit and see what we got. We got a, a helo landing pad. We got some rusted out structures, a couple guard towers. I think we have two of those. Um, we have a kind of a command and control building here. We have multiple entry points as well as, as, well as some barricading. Um, we have a road that leads out. Um, kind of this little trail that leads out and down. You have to kind of come down the mountain and it links up with this MSR down here. Okay, that MSR then feeds to Air Station Mike 26 and feeds, uh, looks like it feeds down over here to like Kerna and whatnot. So again, some interesting um, options here for us. So what I like to do here, since I'm at Camp Maxwell and I feel pretty strongly about it, I'm gonna go over here on this side of the Eden Editor, which is all of our assets, right? So this will be all of our Blue 4 assets, uh, including uh, separated by by um, faction. Um, so if I open NATO, you'll have you know anti-air elements, APCs, artillery, boats, cars. You know, under men here, you'll have all your your uh, soldier units, etc. Um, but there's one here called markers. Okay, I'm going to click on markers, and I'm just going to set a um, set a, kind of a general mark. I'll put it as an exclamation point for now, um, and I'll just call this um, let's see objective area. Okay, so now we kind of know that's that's where we're going. What we do is figure out a start point. The reason that's important is we want to think about that a little bit because you need to consider how long it's going to take you to get to the objective area and based off that distance that may alter the type of insert vehicle or insert parameters you need to consider if you want this to be a mission that you you know can do purely on foot you know you may want to keep your start point somewhere around the southern half of, of um of stratus here somewhere where you could actually walk to the objective area in a reasonable amount of time if you know that uh, you're going to drive a ground-based vehicle, well, then it obviously opens up a lot more of the map. If it's an air, uh, if you're using an air asset, not only does it open up the entire map, but maybe you can even put um, a boat or something out here that your helicopter takes off from. Um, so you have to kind of think about that a little bit. For the sake of this mission, we're going to keep things simple. We're going to do this as a ground-based operation where you walk on foot to the objective area. So I kind of look around here and I kind of look for possible options, okay? So I would think the starting point for Blue 4 would be a reasonable distance away, but maybe... Um, so one thing I could do is maybe come out here to the coast look at some possible options. What I could maybe do down here is start a uh, start point here as if our unit came in by boat and this is where we'll spawn into the mission and yeah we could walk our way to Camp Maxwell pretty reasonably. Now there's a couple ways I could do this. Uh, first I'll go ahead and mark the area once again. So we've got it marked mission start. Now you can kind of see our mission start area or an objective area. Now you have to think, where do you want the mission to end? Do you want it to breadcrumb to a new location for maybe your next mission? Or do you want to head back to where you started from, another area? Or maybe there's an exfil area marked on your map. <coughs> for the sake of this mission, we are going to make... We're going to go back to our mission star area is our exfil, okay? So once again, let's set down an option here. All right, exfiltration. Essentially, as you see, I've already kind of mapped out a lot of what's going on in this mission. I know that 
Um, we're going to start here. We're going to move to the objective area, deal with that situation, and then move right back to our exfiltration point for mission end. Okay? So our, our mission already, even with nothing down on the map yet, is already starting to take shape. Okay? So, first things first.